Hey guys, and welcome to Piano Shack with me, Woody. Now, good audio quality is super important if you're doing YouTube videos or any kind of videos for that matter. The actual audio quality matters more than video quality. And for the last two years, I've been using this to record my vocals, my commentary. This is a very inexpensive Boyer lapel microphone that's plugged directly into my Lumix camera over there into the microphone input. And it's worked really well for about 200 videos. I've been super pleased with it. But now it's starting to get a bit crackly. The lead has broken a bit and that's made the audio in some of my most recent videos a little bit crackly, which is a shame. It's time to replace it. I'm going to level up the audio on my channel. We have here a Zoom H4n, which I've had for a while actually, but I've just bought a H1n because this is easier to fit in your pocket. We'll talk more about that later. I have here a stereo lavalier microphone from Sony. We have a Audio Technica microphone, also a lavalier microphone that you can clip on, connect to the camera or to the zooms over here. And a USB condenser microphone from Samson. And in this video, I'm gonna tell you how you can use all of this equipment to the best effect. And we'll also do some audio comparisons. So for the baseline measurement, let's listen first to this Boyer microphone that I'm talking through right now. This is going into my camera, into the microphone input, and the gain is about zero. This thing is uh, about a five meter long cord that's tethered to the camera. It's been a bit of a pain on some of my videos if I'm trying to be a bit mobile in front of the camera, but otherwise it's worked pretty well to be connected to the camera. And the advantage is I don't have to synchronize the audio in post-production. It's captured on the camera together with the video. We do have a little microphone uh, amplifier capsule here. This takes a small watch battery and it's got an on and off switch as well. So you've got to be really careful when you're recording videos that you've switched this on and that you have a battery with enough power. Otherwise you will lose your audio. It's happened to me a couple of times, I think. I've forgotten to switch it on. And of course, you've got to be careful not to trip over this very long wire. But I've been more than satisfied with the audio quality and I've had no complaints from my viewers. But as I said, it's starting to get a bit worn out, so we are going to replace it. Let's listen to some of the other options right now. So this is probably your worst audio setup, although it is the most convenient. I'm using the microphones on the camera over there. This is a Lumix G7 and no external microphone at all. And it sounds probably very, very roomy because I'm quite a distance away from the camera. That's the advantage with the lavalier mics. You get it really close to the source of the sound. And this is also tricky to mix and adjust the levels because as I come close to the camera now and talk closer to the microphone, it's gonna be much, much louder than if I'm standing over here, which is also an advantage with the lavalier microphones. It's a constant distance from my mouth at all times. So I'm getting the same kind of levels. So although you might be tempted to do so for the convenience and the minimal cost, do not use the built-in microphone on your camera or your smartphone. So you don't know this because of the edit, but I've just spent, or maybe you can see it's getting dark outside, but I have spent half an hour looking around the house to find an adapter so that I can connect the Zoom recorders to my microphone stand. But as a bonus, I realized that I had a Shure SM58, which is your classic rock and roll microphone. So we can even test this one a little bit later on in the video. But right now you are hearing me through the Audio Technica lavalier microphone, which is a very similar microphone to the Boyer that I've been previously using. This is, well, actually the Boyer is probably a copy of this one, I would imagine. But otherwise it's a very similar setup. We have a little amplifier here which runs on a watch battery on off switch. You can use this one with smartphones as well which is a really nice feature. But once again I'm tethered to the camera but that makes for a pretty simple setup. And with the lavalier microphone I get it very close to my mouth for the best possible audio quality. Uh, one other thing to mention, another problem with these little battery capsule things is that it's very easy to forget to switch it off. Not only might you, might you forget to switch it on, but if you forget to switch it off, next time you come to use it, the batteries will be dead and you'll have 
no idea really because there's no LED indicators on this at all. So a little bit tricky to use. You have to remember to check the levels on the camera. But we are going through here on exactly the same settings I had for the Boya. I don't know myself how it's going to sound because this is the first time I've used it. So I'm just as curious to hear as you guys are. So let's move on to the next microphone. Should we listen to the Zoom H1? All right then, now you are hearing me through the Zoom H1, which I've just recently purchased. I haven't heard this myself either, so it's going to be very interesting to hear when I edit the video how it sounds. This is in the optimal position for a voiceover or live stream situation. It's pointing down at my mouth and also capturing the sound that's coming from my chest, so that's ideal. Now this is a nice setup if you're doing streams or anything that's static. But obviously this isn't going to work very well if you're doing more run and gun video things or blogging, for example. But what people sometimes do is mount these little stereo recorders on top of the camera on a hot shoe mount, which works pretty good if you're up nice and close to the camera. But this has a very, very wide uh, pattern. It's going to pick up everything. It's almost a omnidirectional mic so it picks up everything around it in stereo sound so if you are a long way from I can demonstrate that if we move back from the microphone it's going to sound once again rather rather roomy but if you keep the distance to something like this it's going to sound just fine now another disadvantage is I'm going to need to synchronize the audio from this with the video from the camera in post-production let's try the bigger brother of this next which is the zoom H4. So the H4 is a much bigger and more complicated beast than the H1. The main difference is this is a four channel recorder, which is good because I can connect my synthesizers and use the microphone at the same time. It will also allow you to connect up to two external microphones through these XLR connectors. And we'll try that a little bit later on. But this is the sound of the H4. Once again, it's got to be quite close to me. If I'm away from the microphone, it is not going to sound half as good. And another disadvantage of this setup is that I do have to synchronize the audio from the Zoom with the camera's video in post-production, but that's not too bad, but it's an extra step that you need to be aware of. Why don't we try the Zoom H1 with an external lavalier microphone next? So this is the setup I am most excited about. I have a lavalier microphone here. This is a Sony stereo lavalier microphone, which costs about $20. So a very inexpensive item here with a very short cable now that's connected to the Zoom recorder. And the Zoom now is capturing everything from the microphone and these internal speakers are disabled. And this is a great setup. It means that I am now not tethered to the camera anymore. No risk that I'm going to trip over the wires or anything. And I can just tuck this into my pocket or a belt clip. And now I'm free to wander around anywhere in the room and you are gonna hear the same volume from the microphone no matter where I am. This is really, really awesome. This is hopefully going to solve the majority of my audio issues. You can think of this a little bit like a poor man's wireless camera solution. A wireless rig, you have a receiver on the camera and you have a lavalier microphone and a belt pack with a transmitter, but those things are very, very costly. And I do believe that this should give perhaps better audio quality than a cheap wireless system. And it's a lot less hassle, plus much, much more versatile because I can, of course, use this thing for many other applications as well. And I I've ordered a little belt pack so I can just put this on my belt. It's got a record lock so that you can prevent yourself accidentally switching it off. Again, we have the disadvantage here that I have to synchronize the audio from the Zoom. I have to upload it into the computer and then synchronize it with my video in post-production, but that's no big deal. Here is the bonus configuration. This is a Shure SM58 dynamic microphone connected with a cable into the microphone input on the H4n. One thing you notice with these dynamic microphones is you really have to crank up the preamp input gain on the zoom. So this might be a little bit more hissy compared to the other ones. And I'm expecting it to sound a bit more lo-fi as well and not have the same top end. This is a stage microphone really intended for live performances with vocals, but I thought it would be interesting to hear how it sounds. 
So the final configuration we are going to test is this Samsung USB microphone. I don't remember the model name, but when I edit the video, I'll put it in at the bottom as a lower third, and we'll put links to all of this gear in the video description as well. But this is a USB microphone, so it's connected now with this cable directly into my PC, and you can see I'm recording the output here directly in Reaper on the computer. So once again, we have the challenge of synchronizing this with the video a little bit later, but this is not a setup you'd use when you're shooting video anyway, I don't think. This is my, I bought this with the intention of doing live streams, screencasts, and tutorials of computer software. So that's what this is for, and as a static installation, I think it works pretty good, and hopefully the sound is okay. I haven't done any comparison tests of this myself, so it's going to be very interesting to hear what it sounds like. So just a few words on the processing that I'll do on these audio tracks. I will not apply any effects at all except for a peak limiter so that I can raise the audio level without clipping. And I'll make sure that we only get a few dBs of clipping at the most, so you really will be hearing the raw output from all of these different microphones and configurations. I'm really looking forward to hearing the result myself because I really don't know which of these is going to sound the best. But hopefully the lavalier microphone connected to the little zoom that I can put in my pocket will be okay because that's the configuration I'm going to go with. And this will be my live streaming and screen casting configuration. So there you have it. We have compared several inexpensive audio recording solutions so that you also can level up the quality of your YouTube videos. Thanks for watching and subscribing. I'll see you again soon. Cheerio.